if you're inking, or for that matter, if you you want your pencil work to be finished sketch, but especially if you're inking, you'll want the lines to be different thicknesses sometimes because it looks better that way. Now some people like like very little line weight difference. In fact, um, in most manga, I've noticed there is very little line weight difference. But uh, the ones that I actually think look really good, there is a lot of variance and a lot of richness to the way it's drawn. So consider playing with that. Consider learning where the shadows hit and all that kind of thing. I, I still have a lot to learn with that, but it's something that I'm currently studying because I think it really makes things look better. Uh, quick help um, on backgrounds, uh, especially for buildings, etc. I just started using Google's free SketchUp. It's a 3D program where people have been making models for it. You can download. Anyway, so I've got I downloaded the model and I got the exact angle I want because when you're looking for photo reference, it's very hard to find the exact angle you want. It drives me nuts. Anyway, so I get the exact angle I want. I'm like, yes, that's it. And then I copy that out. I don't trace it, I actually draw it out, but it's useful reference to see, you know, Google SketchUp. Google Earth can be useful sometimes too. Um, if you work digitally, zoom out. Don't just look at it little bitsy, do zoom out to make sure that the whole thing does look good. Also zoom out to make sure that you're not upset spending three hours obsessing over a line that nobody can tell doesn't look perfect when it's zoomed out. It's, you know, yeah, it's common sense. <laughs> like you don't actually have to erase as much as you can do. Yeah. Um, uh, if you sketch in blue, you can erase that by scanning it in in color, convert the file to CMYK, turn off the blue channel, and then you've just got the gray scheme, the black lines. She taught me that trick. I didn't know that. It's really easy. Um, okay. Collaborations. A lot of people will say, I want to do a comic, but I'm a writer or I'm an artist. In most cases, it's a writer looking for an artist, not the reverse, which means that if you are a writer looking for an artist, you're going to have a hard time of it. Trust me on this. I taught myself to be an artist because I was a writer looking for an artist and never finding one. But uh, if you're lucky enough to find a collaborator, and that's the way you want to do it, there are some things to keep in mind. First of all, find someone who's willing to work as hard as you will. Find someone who's not going to drop the ball halfway through or even on the second page, which is what happened to me three times running. I'm not bitter. <laughs> find someone who loves the story as much as you do and find someone who has the same work ethic you do. For that matter, find someone who doesn't have a stronger work ethic than you do because if they want to do three pages a week and you just want to do one, there's going to be some tension there because you're going to feel stressed and pushed. And that may not be good. So um, have a plan if things break up. Make sure you know that if the collaboration goes sour, so-and-so keeps this, so-and-so keeps this, so that you don't wind up with hard feelings. I had a, an attempted collaboration with a friend of mine that I was supposed to do the writing, she was supposed to do the art, she decided she hated my script, she wrote her own script, and then she went and turned it into her own story, which, by the way, her script was far inferior to mine, and I'm not biased at all. Um, this was a problem, because we didn't know ahead of time who kept the story, so she took the story. Now, I wound up saying, all right, you can have it because I can't do anything with it without an artist. Um, but I had to let go of a story that really meant something to me that we created together so that she could do it alone. So have a plan. Make sure you know what's going to happen so that there aren't hard feelings so that you're not going to lose friendships over this. Um, Realize um, as the reason why it's so much easier to, plot, to be an art writer and harder to find an artist is the art takes a lot of time. Um, each one of my pages takes at least six to eight hours of work. Yes. And that's a lot of effort. Um, it could be full-time job, etc. Uh, so the realize that the art is a lot very labor intensive and so they have to be very involved. You either have to be paying them or it's they're really excited about the story. There are two reasons why there tend to be more writers seeking artists than the readers. <coughs> the first is writing does not take writing a page of prose can take just as long as drawing a page of comic, but writing a page of comic script does not take nearly as long. So that's one reason. The second is, frankly, it's easier for people to think that they're good writers when they're not than it is for people to think they're good artists when they're not. So there are a lot of people out there that think they're very good writers when they really need an editor and they really need a lot of peer review. Um, going out there looking for an artist that's mind-bogglingly amazing and they 
mind-bogglingly amazing the artist says, I don't want to work with you. <laughs> okay. Um, decide early on also about the division of profits, resources, all that kind of thing. Not just so that you know in case you break up, but so that, for instance, we are actually starting collaboration, the two of us. And we decided that 75% uh, of the profits go to her, 25% to me. I was actually willing to take less. I know she takes more time on each page than I do. A lot more time. Therefore, of course she should get more profits. Keep this in mind. Make sure that everyone's happy before you start. <laughs> Again, avoid hard feelings. It's cool. The cool thing about our collaboration is um, I know that my weakness is humor, while Emily does humor fantastically. So I'm like, I wanted to do something that was funny because I know that that's more popular. Like, people go and read something funny quicker um, while I do drama all the time. I'm like, oh. But uh, anyway, so I'm like, Emily, I want to do something funny with you. And so she's like, okay, we're going to do something funny. I'm like, sweet, an artist who's yeah. amazing wants me. Yes. So it's going to be pretty and funny. It's exciting. Okay. Yeah, okay. But we... look at my, watch my website. There's a thing going around if you want to read that something. Oh. We haven't got much time left. We've got to hurry. Okay, oh. storytelling. Don't start with an epic. Oh my goodness. Most people do this. They say, I'll start with something very simple and then it just explodes on me. And then I have this 10 volume epic and I know I'm going to do the whole thing. You probably won't. Frankly, your first story idea will not be your best. Your first story idea will probably be one of your worst. And that's hopefully, that's a good thing. You want to get better. So start with short stories. Start with something that if it fails halfway through, you can wrap it up, and it's not a big deal, and you won't leave readers trying to kill you. Um, I know my first comic, which is still online, but it's yeah. only 30 pages long, um, it, it was an epic. And I was like, I can't do this. I'm not skilled enough yet yeah. Yeah. to be able to pull this off. I'm like, I have this huge story. It's going to be gorgeous someday when I do do it. Um, so that's why I started with the other comic, which right there, which is intentionally going to be short stories. These are going to end. So I can go on and learn new things, try new things, and instead of being stuck at this one thing that I'm not prepared to draw the car chase that is in that particular comic. I'm not ready for that yet. I don't draw cars well. <laughs> and so I'm starting with things I can do and forcing myself to get better until someday I will go back to that story. When I started my comic strip, I set it up in such a way that it had individual arcs, and if I ever got sick of it earlier than I thought I was going to, I could end it there and have it be completely satisfying. Um, when I started my manga, I did not intend a full length. I started with short stories. I intended to do five sto short stories before I did a full length. The only reason I started the full length after my second short story was that the idea of the second so short story was so incredibly compelling that I knew I, knew I could do a full length story on this. But here's the thing, I outlined the entire thing before I started writing. I knew I wanted to do every single stage. Also, I have written epics, I have failed at epics, I have written series, I have failed at series, I've succeeded at series. I've been doing this a very long time. I have a good sense of what I can do and what I can't. Make sure you have a good sense of what you can do and what you can't before you commit yourself to something really, really big. Start um, small, always a good idea. You can always get bigger, but it's really hard to pair back. Yes.